Cozy Gamers and welcome back to the Cozy Gaming Club where we talk about all the latest and greatest cozy games. I'm Ellie and today we're going to be taking a first look at a brand new cozy game that just launched on PC in early access. That game is called Shine Hill and in it you play as an alien who is going undercover on an unfamiliar planet. But it turns out that you're not the only one hiding something. In this video, I'll be giving you an overview of my first week in the game to give you a taste of what to expect from the full release. Our story begins on a space station as I moodily stalk down a corridor annoyed at the slave-like conditions I'm working under. There, I come across a series of tanks filled with floating bodies, which will serve as my disguise. I choose the female body type, of course, and I soon find myself in a spaceship racing through the stars. As I get closer to my destination, a transmission comes through. It turns out that my job is to visit this planet and investigate the resources there to decide if it's a suitable planet for us to settle on. But before I can land, a small minigame crops up, where I need to dodge and destroy the meteorites flying towards my small spaceship. Kind of like that classic asteroids game. This was the first of many, many minigames, and the asteroids were actually really hard to dodge because lining them all up was difficult. I managed to stay alive for a while, but before long I was crashing, and then being saved by two figures that I couldn't quite make out in the darkness. Next thing I know, I was waking up in a small hospital being tended to by Dr. Jack. He is shocked by my injuries, or lack thereof, but thankfully he'd mistaken my spaceship for a flying balloon. I just told him that everything was hurting when William entered to check in on me. He was glad that I was feeling better and said that I must be Rue, but Rue who? And apparently I'd bought a house in town. Our undercover alien operations are much more organised than I originally expected. He also gave me some new clothes to wear and then it was time to go to my farm. It was actually super cute besides the massive piles of rubbish all over the place. William explained that no one had lived there in a while and it needed some love and care. Then he said to find Ben the farmer who would give me all the tools I needed to get started. After he left, I went over my plans, which generally involved deceiving the members of this small community while I investigated the viability of this planet. Step one in that plan was to do what the villagers would expect me, a new member of the community, to do, starting with visiting the farmer for tools. First, he needed my help dealing with some bees that were bothering him, though, and thus started another minigame. This time, I needed to select the flowers in the right order in order to help them to grow. There were a few failed attempts, but it didn't take long, and soon I had a new hoe, pickaxe, watering can, and axe in my pockets. And yes, this is Stardew Valley tool style, so they take up room in your inventory. But we do get two rows of inventory space from the start, which is nice. I returned to William to turn in my quest, and he gave me some tomato seeds to help me get started on my farm and taught me the basics of farming. Then he gave me everyone's favourite farming sim quest to meet the other villagers, and also visit the doctor. But first I decided it was time to plant my seeds. I started with digging some holes, one of which I made by accident and couldn't remove, and then planted my tomato seeds and watered all of them. Then it was time to meet the villagers, starting with this character lying beneath a tree. Brian thinks that I'm not as boring as the rest of the villagers, and boy, he has no idea how true that is. Just past Brian was the hospital, so I popped in to see the good doctor, who was pleased to hear I was doing better. But he'd spent all of his medicine patching me up and needed my help gathering new supplies. That wouldn't be too hard once I'd learned what all of this stuff was. I also met the cute nurse, Lucy, just outside, and I bumped into Sophia looking down a well. When I followed the path to the north, I found myself in a forest filled with cute squirrels and hedgehogs who dropped the quills I needed for my doctor's quest when I fed them apples. After wandering a little further, I found myself back in town and continued my Meet the Villagers quest with Peter the Monk. The great thing about Shine Hill is right from the start of the game, everyone was displayed on the map. So I had no trouble running around to meet the beautiful Crystal, Vince, who was obsessed with a pie, and Pinky, who was sad that I'd taken over the abandoned house because now he couldn't hide there anymore. I also met Barbara, who told me she had the best having around, but then confessed that she had no visitors and may need to close down if things don't pick up. 
but with a signature dish, she might be able to get people to visit. So she asked me to make her some fish and carrots, and even gave me some carrot seeds to get started. I made my way home to plant them straight away, only stopping to say hello to Martha, who was working in the fields. With my carrots planted, I decided to explore my farm, and found a path to the south which led to the beach. There I met two more people, Stacy, who called me a wimp, and a fisherman called Boris, who gave me a rod. Naturally, I tried it out straight away, and it's a fun little mini-game. Although it is quite difficult, as you need to press the arrow keys in the right direction and there's not much time to do so. I managed to successfully catch a sand swimmer and a couple of starfish though. There were also a ton of shells on the beach and I really recommend picking them up because they spawn every day and sell for 9 gold each. Before calling it a night I decided to use my leftover energy to clean up the rubbish polluting my farmyard. On day two, I woke up to a letter in the mail saying I needed to go to the training area at the beach to learn self-defense and get a sword. But first, I watered my plants and realized that if I watered from above, it actually waters multiple plants at once, which is cool. Then I headed to the beach to speak to Stacy, who gave me an aptitude test to check if it was really safe to give me a sword. When you're talking to the villagers, you can either increase or decrease your disguise depending on the choices you make which is displayed in this bar in the bottom right hand of the screen. Saying too many outlandish things like you want to kill everyone will make villagers suspect you more. So I answered every question innocently and received a sword as my reward. While wandering around yesterday trying to meet all the villagers, I'd also managed to collect a whole orchard of apples. So I returned to the hedgehogs to feed them their five a day and get the last quills I needed for my quest. Back at the hospital, I turned in and Dr. Jack asked if I'd be willing to deliver a potion to the general store as well. So off I went. There I met Galena, who was very grateful for the ointment as her back had been really bothering her. In fact, while walking along the beach the other day, she'd lost her famous pie recipe and couldn't throw the party for the new resident, me, until she found it. She also mentioned that the last person to move here was a nurse, Lucy, which is useful information to know as a Steam page does suggest there is an imposter hiding among us. Besides me, I mean. So it was time to return to the beach and after collecting my daily shells and meeting Rudy, the last villager I needed to greet to complete my Meet the Villagers quest, I explored the entire area for this missing recipe. Of course, I ran around the entire area before realising it was smack dab in the centre. I snatched it up and made my way back to town to redeem both of my quests. First, I chatted to William, who gave me some money as a reward, and then I spoke to Galena to deliver the pie recipe. The screen faded to black and then still stayed quite dark. It was actually really hard to make out what I was doing here, but I suppose it was meant to represent the fact the party was at night. I made my way around chatting to everyone and hit another minigame where I needed to fill up my glass of wine to get drunk, without letting the bear and blob creatures knock it over. Once it was full, I had a little stagger around, but sadly talking to Peter immediately sobered me up. I finished my rounds chatting to everyone at the party before heading home to call it a night. But when I did, there was someone waiting for me. I approached them carefully, and they introduced themselves as Rue, who had bought the house I was living in. Internally, I was panicking, wondering what to do in this situation when my character suddenly hit Rue over the head with a bottle. Day three started in a cave, where I was seemingly keeping Rue while I worked out what to do. He wasn't very happy, and he explained how all he had was a dream to live on a farm with a wife and children and make jam, except the wife and children weren't really that important to his dream. So he said if I bought him some jam, he'd be willing to stay silent in exchange. This guy must really love jam. Fortunately, I had a plan to buy his silence, for now, and then erase his memory using a tool that was on my spaceship. I just needed to find it first. That really should have been at the top of my agenda, but when I left the cave, I saw this run-down shack and remembered the geese I'd seen back at the farm on day one. So I set about rebuilding it, and after an hour or so in the game, I had all of the resources I needed. Sadly though, the geese were a lot more expensive than I was expecting them to be. And with a measly 90 gold to their 1700 gold price tag, I think it'll be a while until I get them. 
My journey wasn't wasted though, as Martha had a task for me to help her water her huge field of crops. There were so many that she'd accidentally missed a few, so I got to work making sure every plant had the water it needed to grow big and strong. As a reward, Martha gave me some tea and a nut pie, and then I headed to the general store where I'd noticed Galena had another quest for me. She wanted to teach me how to have a pleasant conversation with other villagers, and suggested that I learn their favourite dishes to do so. After all, the way to anyone's heart is through their stomach. She gave me a raspberry pie to test this theory on Sophia, who also just happens to be her niece, so maybe she's trying to set her up with a new farmer? Either way, I gave Sophia the pie and she was very happy. It was afternoon by this point and I figured that it was finally time to complete the main quest line. So I made my way to the beach to talk to Rudy, who was not helpful at all. While I was there, I went fishing for some starfish for a delivery I'd noticed on the quest board that morning and collected my daily shells. I also interacted with the crabs in the center of the beach and discovered that there was a mini game where you could try and catch them. After failing badly with one of the common orange crabs, I successfully trapped the blue crab and discovered that that makes them your pet. Cute. Back in town, I spoke to Lucy who drew a map to the crash site of my ship after I'd solved a puzzle piecing it together, which was actually quite difficult to do with a controller. I was surprised that I had no idea where this area of the map was. It must be somewhere I'd not been yet. After quickly delivering my order of starfish, I made my way north out of the village to see if I could find this mysterious lake, which didn't take long at all. Except there was a giant snail in the way, and they wanted 42 pieces of grass in order to move. So I started slashing with my sword and spent the rest of the day collecting green green grass. I also found a small cave where I discovered a strawberry cake recipe and then lost over half of my health in one hit from the monster there. I would not be fighting them anytime soon. Before heading to bed, I stopped by the general store to pick up some sugar for the jam, which was so expensive at 350 gold each. I had to sell a lot of the items I'd been hoarding to get three of them to make enough jam for Rue. On day four, I knew I needed to get to work to make the jam. So I started by chopping down trees and breaking rocks to collect all the resources I needed to fix the stove in my kitchen, as well as some grass for the snail. With that done, I combined a range of different fruits with sugar to create the jam I needed for my quest, which I immediately dropped off to keep brew quiet. I also watered my crops, but I couldn't figure out how to pick these carrots that were finely grown, so I just left them. Before heading out to town, I also remembered I had a crab friend in my pocket, so I added them to my coop which let them wander around my farm. Petting them also gave me some seaweed which was cool. I spent much of the rest of the day running around slashing every piece of grass I saw to collect the grass I needed to appease the snail. By 5pm I finally had enough and after I handed it over the snail moved out of the way and set up a store where I could buy items? I was not expecting that but they had a few different varieties of seeds in stock as well as more backpack space. It was getting late now, but I still decided to do a quick exploration of the new area and found a new recipe as well as the crash site. Unfortunately, my spaceship was at the bottom of a lake, and I need a pretty big lifting device to retrieve it. So I decided to ingeniously trick the villagers by making a giant fishing rod. Because that would look completely normal, right? In the dark of the night, I finally worked out how to pick my carrots and quickly planted the beet seeds I'd bought from the snail. But then I collapsed before I could plant my new carrot seed. Fortunately, there doesn't seem to be a penalty for fainting though. On day five, my tomatoes had fully grown, so I picked them, planted my new seeds and watered my other plants. After that, it was to the beach to visit the fisherman and convince him to make a giant fishing rod for me. I told him that I wanted to catch the huge tuna and he was immediately on board and wrote me a list of things I needed to collect, including 20 wood, 3 copper and a fruit cocktail. I'd not discovered copper yet so I was going to have to explore a bit more to find out where I mined that from. I also tried fishing in the village for the first time and caught the fish I needed for the fisherman's quest. So I immediately went back to him and collected the modest 30 gold as my reward. Remembering the cave from yesterday, I decided to make my way back there to search for copper. This is another area that's a little too dark to see, 
but after deftly avoiding the bug and venturing deeper into the cave system, I found my first piece of copper. And then another. Before long, I'd found all the copper I needed, and after a crystal was shot at me by a giant golem thing, I decided it was time to leave. Once again, I did not make it to bed before midnight, and I fainted in the middle of town. Day 6 started much the same way as day 5, with me chopping down all of the trees on my farm, this time to build a giant fishing rod. I also had a letter from Pinky, who asked me to collect a list of items for him. In my house, I tried crafting the fish for carrots, but didn't realise that my inventory was full, and so I lost it. My inventory was starting to get very full now, but I remembered that I'd seen a chest for sale at the general store. So I made my way there, grabbed it, and went back to my farm. Which I instantly filled with all the veggies I'd grown, as well as the flowers and fruit I'd been hoarding. I also had a go at guessing how to make a fruit cocktail recipe on my stove, as it was so expensive to buy from town, but... Unfortunately, I wasn't successful. I took on a few quests at the quest board to try and make some money, and then quickly caught the purple circles I needed from the lake, before redeeming the quest and buying my fruit cocktail. Which I delivered along with the other resources to the fishermen on the morning of day 7. Rudy crafted me a huge fishing rod while Boris looked on drinking his expensive fruit cocktail. But I now had the mega fishing rod, and I went straight to the lake to use it. After a few confusing attempts at the minigame, I successfully lowered my rod all the way into the depths of the lake, and then brought the ship all the way back to the surface. There I was able to grab the memory eraser, which I'd completely forgotten about by this point, and a chip card which let me enter the bunker we'd hidden on this planet. As intriguing as the alien bunker was, first up was erasing Rue's memory. Back at the cave, I loaded the eraser into the machine and successfully obliviated him. Then I sent him away on a boat with his jars of jam. Now I needed to find a bunker, except the only clue I had was Stump Forest. Fortunately, I already knew exactly where that was, as I'd investigated it way back on day one, wondering why there was a random stump on its own. Before long, I was opening the secret stump door and heading into the bunker. Somewhere inside here was a communication device that would let me contact my headquarters. I just had to find it. This area actually ended up being kind of like a mine itself, where I explored multiple floors of what appeared to be a hospital. There were beds, records, and lots of lasers that I needed to dash across. And a ridiculous amount of iced coffee, which I was actually able to sell to buy coffee seeds at the coffee machine. Slowly, I worked through the different levels of the bunker, unlocking doors to move deeper into the building. I also came across a number of records about strange shards and some mysterious twins they were experimenting on. Sadly, I didn't make it to the bottom before I fainted. But that means you can discover it yourself if you decide to pick up Shine Hill. What did you think of this game? Are you going to check it out? Let me know down in the comments and while you're down there, why not like this video and subscribe to my channel for even more cozy gaming content. As always, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next video. Bye!